Hi there, I'm Evelyn Kleiss. I'm in Studio San Paolo, which is a studio, an old church that um, Deborah Forbes and Linda Gordon and I bought 20 years ago, and we've been enjoying uh, coming here to work. So I, this is my space where I come and paint. I'm using oil paints. I've prepped a canvas with a tint, and I'm going to be painting on it today. It won't take you long to discover that I like horses. Um, and I'm, this is a program called Blank Canvas. So I'm going to fill up a canvas. And uh, I, the, the subject is horses and I'm doing them out of my head. I don't have a picture here, but I grew up with horses. I love them. Um, I like to capture something about the freedom, the beauty, the elegance, the spirit of the horse. I had horses, several that I loved and rode and have photographs of, but I don't try to necessarily paint their portrait to look realistic. I would rather paint that spirit and um, capture the, the feeling of it. So I'm gonna have a few here. Um, I, I've tinted, as I said, got the canvas, so I've got some color on it. It's pretty dry. Oil paints do take a little while, but that was a thin layer yesterday and it's dried. So I'm just gonna start drawing right on the canvas. I've got a little bit of color on my palette, but I will be um, putting out more. I've got my paints here. So what I'm gonna do is start and this, this is, I've done a couple of these where the line, uh, I do what we call sketching, and I don't worry if it drips a little bit, I, I try to use that. But um, it's gonna be, they sort of overlap, but we've got uh, the idea of the horse and his arched neck, the, the, the neck of the horse significant to his shape, the back and rump, and then um, what I do is start to do these, this is sort of a, a type of drawing when you're practicing and these how to draw a horse book. <laughs> we'll show you these sections, you know, how it's, there's this sort of tubular thing here and then the, another oval here. And so I draw that in and then that becomes part of the design. So we get a, um, different segments in the picture. And I don't mind this where this is moving around, this paint moves, it might become part of the background or um, sort of the design of the horse. So I'm just gonna keep going here. Sometimes I don't put the detail of the hoof in because if you got them out moving around, <clears throat> you might not see that the, I'll stop part way down. So we've got this leg isn't quite right. It's a little too small for the neck and shoulders, so we can wipe it off. Um, I'm using an odorless paint thinner. And it's, it's not uncommon that you have to erase or blotch or spill or whatever, but that, that, that works. Um, that's better. It's a little bit more in proportion to the, the horse's head. Now, their tail, too, if they're running free they, and they're feeling good, they throw their tail up they, and, and it blows in the wind, which is another one of the things that sort of adds to the beauty and that wild freedom that we, everybody, a lot of people respond to with horses. So we'll get just uh, this, and it's interesting, a horse when he's running it and trotting and walking, it's a left front and a right back foot that moves. So, and if they're galloping, uh, one foot is generally on the ground. Not always, but, but often it'll be this three point, three legs up. I better not get too technical or somebody will correct me, but I think that's kind of how it works. So this, he's kind of walking smart. He's not galloping. So he's gonna have this foot up Leg comes back here like this. Hoof turns in when it's lifted. This leg then will be behind the other, this front leg. This one I'm gonna put in front. As I said, it should be opposite sides. So this one's gonna go back here, kind of bends behind here. If you could see the rest of it, it would be like this. And we'll bring it down. Hoof in here, gonna get a little bit and I can change my color just so if I start to get the same and can't see where my new lines are. So now that's enough for that first horse. I'm not gonna paint anymore, but I, the next one is gonna overlap and he's gonna be his back. Just get this going here. I want his back in here and his rear end here. Oh, I want him further back. 
do a correction here. We don't, like I said, that's not going to be a problem. Oil paint, you can do an awful lot of overpaint. Um, it doesn't uh, it cause a problem. Watercolor, you want to keep it fresh. You wouldn't be doing that scrubbing out for one thing. Um, would be considered a fail. Okay, rear end is here now, but he's going to be behind this front horse. So his neck is going to come. I'm going to make him maybe a little further down, his head tilted down a little more, just so they're not exactly the same. So we'll bring his head in, kind of tucked in like this. Um, like I said, when they're feeling good, they get these wonderful arched necks and prance, and it's like they're showing off, kind of. And uh, so we come around here, curve this, tuck this in here. Shoulder line is very important there for the neck to come into that. And then this is this section again. Now, roughly on the same level, not quite. Put this leg, I'm gonna have it back a little more in this one, really forward. So I'm gonna get rougher now, quicker here. I wanna get this blocked in a little more and then I'll do that detail drawing. But just to show where it's gonna be, I got him a little bit fat there. Get that, get my, some cleaner stuff so it doesn't drip so bad, there we go. Okay, now stomach is here. This is about right. So his back leg is going to be almost right behind that one. And this is where in a composition you could kind of get into a mess if you, if I put all the legs and everything in, which of course we should have four, but um, it, it, you get a whole bunch of stuff happening there. So it might not work that I put them all in. And when I get finished, when you see more stuff happening, I'm going to have some action lines that sort of go we're going to have some motion lines that do this sort of thing in the background colors. So then these extra legs, like I said, we're not extra, but the, the regular legs wouldn't be so jumbled up. Um, and that's just what, what I do. It doesn't mean that that's how it would have to be done. But uh, so that back leg stuff there might not even be shown. Now I want one more horse before we get, and we're going to have another one and his head's going to be sort of more up here get his head looking up and face up. See if we can get this a little bit better. And maybe his ears are back, because if he's kind of mad at the others, you never know. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, and put a mark there where they're gonna be a little bit bigger head. Okay, head is up, just a bit bigger. Chest, again, the, the neck, comes in and this back comes through here and around here like this. And I'm gonna have his legs up. He's gonna be kind of in a galloping position, so a little faster. He's kind of ahead of those two. So we can get this leg hoof around here, body there. And this, they're both up. He's, he's galloping, as I said. This leg will come back. I like this leg to show, so I might have to change that one. Nope, that'll work, okay. Now, that's basically the three horses I'm gonna have in here. I don't think I'll put a fourth. So then I start, I'm gonna block in a little bit more of the shadows and these these motion lines that I mentioned of, of to get the feeling that there's, there's movement. That's a bit too dark. So I want this one, it's going to go right out. This one comes this way. And then we have maybe even sort of like this. These will be, uh, as I said, filled in with sections of color as I go. Um, okay, this one's down here. Now there's some nice open space here. I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do. I don't know if I want those two legs both together now, decided. I'm going to change that. We're going to bring this down here. And I've got a lot of paint on the brush right now. This kind of changes the look of it, but I wanted his head a little bit bigger anyway. Okay, so that leg's going back, that one's down. Um, I think we'll put this one back and have him trotting too. I just, that didn't seem to work with the two legs up, I don't think so. 
get this to work here a little longer. Nope, that's not working either. <laughs> that's okay. We can make them work. Bring this shoulder up. Maybe I do have to have that leg up. Because there's something to do with it. I don't want him. He can't be in front of these two now. So you got these things to think about. And then I'm... There, that's working better. Okay, leg comes over there. Yeah, and his back leg is going to be here. And he, I actually could have, because if he's stepping forward, we might see this one and a hoof here. So there. Now, I like the position better. Now I'm going to go back and put in the, um, uh, use a little bit more of an outline um, so that I can tell for sure where I want things to be an edge and sometimes when I finish the painting the line outline itself will still be there and part of the composition not just filled in and then um, where you have painting ending here in background there but you'll actually see the line as part of the uh, image that I, I want it to stay and especially um, if it's a very expressive kind of it'll go wider or thinner and the line becomes important to the overall picture, not just to, to draw the, the uh, shape in. So we'll keep that there, but um, I'm going to bring this back. So I'm using two colors mostly right now. That One is called Burnt Sienna, this rich brown. Get it back in again. It's um, a beautiful paint. It's, it's a good color too to use because it is easy to cover or uh, it kind of, if you had to get rid of it, it isn't so hard, where some of them are very permanent and have a, a very intensity to them. They would be hard to paint back over or change if you didn't like it. So Burnt Sienna, I, I like it a lot for outlining. The blues are two beautiful blues. There's an ultramarine blue I use a lot and a cobalt blue deep, cobalt blue genuine. Um, it's very interesting. This cerulean blue is another... Where did it, here it is. Cerulean blue is, uh, and we'll be using it up in here. And so now what I'm doing, I'm going to get these sections and then I'm going to be mixing some colors and blocking in areas. Uh, like, it, almost like you would if you had a coloring book, it would have lines and you would fill in those spaces with color. Now this one it has to be more precise because it's going to be the line that I keep. So. Try to get this more exacting here. A little curve there for his hoof. Okay, now back to a bit more so I can see this better as the blue with the... And the hoof. Again, some of them, are like I, the hoof is an interesting shape with that ankle. Comes in a little dip and down. And I kind of want to show that in a couple of them. As I said, some of them might get rubbed out as far as in the background of the design. This is the heel here of this other foot. We're not going to show it through there. We might. We'll see what happens. Roughly the same. I don't want one leg too much longer than the other. Um, they should be. Right, so he walks, so he's balanced. Otherwise, it would be a bit tricky. Okay, this one comes down, up and around here. Now, what I want to do now, just that one's kind of drawn in the way I'd like the lines. Oops, his head isn't. The other one I'm going to draw in because I like that blue next to this um, burnt sienna. I like seeing the blue outline. I'm going to use the blue for this second one on purpose. So that, and yet I like the idea of the contrasts of yellows and the uh, yellow ochre it's called, or raw sienna. Raw sienna is a really neat color. You go to Italy, which I have done a few times and I love it over there. The, the ground, there are places in the ground and in, in the, in a lot of the buildings have this color in them. So, raw sienna, and then there's umber, and there's a province in Italy called Umbria. So, um, as I'm painting, all of this kind of comes out 
in my mind and in my enjoyment of it. We kind of remember these things. Okay, so that is going to have these nice curves here, and this is going to be here, and this is going to be here, and we're going to get this blue guy going. And I want to use a little bit of that cobalt blue. Beautiful. That's too dark. Or it's got the other color mixed in, but I want it more blue blue. So um, keep the paint thinner in the brush. You, if you're drawing with a brush, you really want to keep it kind of clean at the top, not let it go like this one. This one is totally different. I wouldn't be, I mean, it would, you could draw with it, but it's more for scrumbling in and filling in. And I may be using that when I get to the background. But this one has a nice edge to it. And that's a drawing tool because we're trying to get it more meaningful or imp significant line here. There, and now a little more blue because as I said, this is gonna be the, hopefully the, 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 the line that stays, the permanent line. And it, some of it'll get painted over, but some of it might stay um, as it is in a clear part of the picture. Get this coming right around. And I'm gonna, another motion here and another one here. A horse has a nice, um, there's a kind of a muscle line here. So we can put that in. Jaw and the front of the face. Um, I was very, uh, I had usually Arabian horses. Their head is a little different shape than other horses. They have a, their, um, the breed has a kind of a little dip in the head, just a bit there. And large, intelligent eyes, um, quite fine features otherwise, but that little dip. So sometimes I don't make it quite as straight as, as a lot of the breeds have just a very straight head there. And, but that's why sometimes I put that little dip. Thinking of my beautiful, he was an Arabian horse called Racantes, registered Arabian. <laughs> and, um, Others here, we'll get, I'm gonna use some more brown, go back to something else. That's that, so we got the darker brown, the blue, didn't quite do his legs. This is the blue with the brown. And often you don't, and well certain kinds of art, but in something like this, you wouldn't use straight black out of the tube. You would, you would make it so it has a more warmth to it. You'd mix these two blues, uh, the blue and the brown, and you can get a very dark color, dark enough to serve as almost as black. So we want his neck coming back up here. And um, we're going to do a part two of this painting. When we get to the second part, I will be be putting the paint into these areas and uh, filling it in as a design, as an overall painting rather than a drawing on a canvas. So we get this over here. Now I think in most paintings you have the underlay as such and you, you would have the drawing, but sometimes it's done with pencil, which would be give you a little more precision, but depending on the style that you're working. And you can see I'm not trying to get everything down to the absolute fine detail here. So get him across here. The rump would come around there. That's why that, that can have that circle in there. It kind of works to have those extra curvy lines. This leg I do want to show up and we'll put that down there. And then this one's gonna go this way. Get a little more brown. Okay, that shoulder's kind of wrong there. It's too thick, maybe. Let's see, in the leg. Okay. Like I said, we're not doing correct, completely correct anatomical horses. We're doing something you look at it and say, they look sort of like horses. They make me think of horses. <laughs> um, the spirit, the feeling of it. And it's the painting, because uh, there's a difference. If you wanted, like, a photograph is, is going to show you something different and you can play with photography too. You can distort or blur, or do all kinds of things with it. But a painting is, you're trying to create something that is flat. If this is a flat surface, this is paint. We're not making the real thing. So we, we play with what's on the canvas. Um, we design and work with that. And I'm gonna be using some of this accidental stuff. We'll work that into it.
Okay, I'm just going to see if I can get some something happening down here with this idea mentioned about. Um, I'm going to go to a thicker brush, put in a bit of this. See what happens. This might not turn out really to be kept. I might <laughs> paint over top of it, but I think <laughs> it could. This is how I would normally do a painting. But uh, of course, trying to do it fairly quickly, um, if I were painting without the being on the, the, the blank canvas show, I could uh, sort of take my time and go back and fix and plan it a little bit more. But I, I had thought about it before we started. So, uh, and I've done a few of these, so it's not like it's the first time out. So I like getting the yellow in there because that's going to give me some effect of light. And then we're going to have some dark because we want to have some contrast. This is going to be a bit tint of a green, which normally don't do a whole lot. It's not going to be so much like earth, but well, I mean, it is supposed to be like earth, not like grass. But I want to get a little bit of more coverage here. And that's where this fuzzy brush is good. Then we'll get into the paint tubes and start to, to um, mix some new colors. Okay, I think we maybe get some more ground over here. It's nice to paint on canvas. It it's behaves differently from, I've painted on hardboard, um, masonite hardboard and um, what's called a canvas board. So you get the canvas surface, but um, it, it, it's a little bit different behavior. It doesn't bend. This has this lovely flexibility to it. And another neat thing about doing it this way is I never know quite, like I don't have a finished uh, version in my mind quite yet. It's growing and developing as I'm painting. So that will come along. I'm going to put some nice dark stuff in here too, so we don't have it all light. There, we got a, a, a base for it. They can be not flying through the air at this point. So now I'm going to get some more colors out because I want to get, uh, what I like to do is use my, these uh, are palette knives. Um, it's interesting, this, I had several good ones. My mother was a painter. Um, some of you would know Margaret Mann Buttick, B-U-T-U-K, her last name. So here's one of her palette knives with the MB on it. And uh, it's kind of neat to be able to paint. We used to go out and paint together, uh, drive out in the country with the car loaded up with lunch and, and our paints, and we'd find a good spot that we were going to work in, and uh, then she'd say, well, let's have lunch, and we'd have lunch, and then she'd say, now, now we can get to work. So then we'd start to paint, and it would be uh, prairie scenes or old buildings out in the country. And uh, so that has been happening to me for a long time, those memories of painting with, with mom. It was great fun. So this is the raw sienna. I have some out, but I know I'm going to need some more. And sometimes I'll put it in two parts because when I start to mix it, it gets kind of, well, gets dirty or changed. So I want to keep some that's clean that hasn't got the other colors in it. And I got in a habit of putting the tops back. It takes longer doing it that way, but it saves the paint a little more. Um, cadmium red middle. Um, the cadmium red comes in light, middle, and deep. It, it's a really good one. The, the middle, the cadmium red middle, is a very pure red. Goes well with the other colors to mix. Okay, so another color that I use a lot is called alizarin crimson. And it's a deep kind of a, as you can see, it's a kind of a purpley deep crimson. It's different from red. Oh, that's got a little bit on the end. That's why it looks so dark. But it mixes beautifully to make me those dark colors I was talking about that take the place of pure black. So I'm going to mix up some colors here 
and uh, we're going to see you in part two of Blank Canvas. Thanks for watching part one. Tune in next week to see Evelyn continue her painting.